So both the Greeks and the Medes come from the Indo-European family. The Indo-Europeans stretch from the Indus River in northern India to the Black Sea, and eventually all the way to Ireland. They represent one of the three Caucasian groups. Traditionally, it was taught that there were three Caucasian groups, the first being the Hamite Caucasians, who became known as the Egyptians, the second being the Semite Caucasians, who became known as the Babylonians, Hebrews, Elamites, and Assyrians, and the third being the great Indo-Europeans, or Japhites, also known as the Aryans, which included Northern Indians, Greeks, Medes, Latins, Celts, Germanic races, Slavs and Russians, also known as Scythians. This was taught in schools, universities, and even in church. It's really in the last 150 years that we've seen a major change in the biblical story at the hands of globalization. So the story goes like this. There was a flood in Mesopotamia that wiped out the first great empire known as Sumer. Why did God wipe out Sumer? The common church view is that fallen angels rebelled against God and started having children with earthly women. Now, the second more logical and realistic view that used to be taught in church was Adam's children, the sons of God, began mixing with the primitive tribal people, daughters of man. And after mixing, the offspring from this mixture became incredibly corrupt adopting foreign violent cultures instead of what was originally taught to Adam by God. Noah was only saved because he was culturally, spiritually, and racially pure. In Genesis 6-9, it explains that God spared Noah because he was a just man, genetically perfect, and that he walked with God. We then have Noah's Ark landing on the Caucasian mountains about 4,500 years ago on Mount Ararat which coincidentally is the home of the white race. Noah's three sons and their sons dispersed in different directions from this point. So the old church tradition was that Noah and his sons were the white races. So Noah's sons and grandsons divided and eventually mixed with other people. And so Noah's sons represent the three Caucasian groups. Now, today, the churches teach the whole world was submerged under water and that only eight people survived. Therefore, we are all the product of serious incest, and somehow Noah and his wife gave birth to one pure African son, one pure white son, and one pure Asian son, and we're all somehow related. However, all DNA, all archaeology, linguistics, and even our modern world testifies that exactly where Noah's Ark landed is the exact starting point for the white race. But of course, this view is racist and the modern day church view is more multicultural and therefore it's accepted. The Great Events from Great Historians, a collection from 1905, makes no apologies that Noah and his sons represent the three Caucasian groups. So this was a normal view in white Western Christian nations. Noah and his sons were Caucasian, hence why we call the mountains where Noah landed the Caucasian Mountains. The first three major empires after the flood were the Hittites in Anatolia, Egypt or Mizra, who comes from Ham's son Mizraim, and the Semites from Shem, who ruled Mesopotamia after a Semite named Sargon of Akkad conquered Mesopotamia not long after the Bible says the flood happened. These kingdoms are recorded in secular history, and the Bible fully backs this up. So the Aryans or Indo-Europeans represent the Japhites, and in Greek mythology, two of the main gods who gave birth to all the gods were Gaia and Uranus, and they gave birth to a god named Iapetus, or Japhetus, who was also known as Japheth. He is one of the fathers of the Greeks. The Bible calls the Greeks Javan, who was a son of Japheth. If you go to your Bible concordance, you will see that under Javan, it says Ionian Greek. When we look at language from India to Ireland, we see connections just through the words. In Sanskrit, which is Old Indo-Aryan and is the base for the Indian language today, we see similarities when we compare it with Old Persian, Latin, Greek, and even Gaelic. We see some serious connections. From Sanskrit to Old Persian, it's almost identical. Look at the words father, mother, and brother. 
even when we compare to German and English, even when we look at Gaelic, Greek, and Latin, we can see the Aryan roots. So even after thousands of years, we can still see similarities in the languages. Now, the first name of the Aryan's country was called Arata. It was in the mountains somewhere near Iran and Armenia, like the mountain Ararat, Arata, where the Bible says Noah's Ark landed and became the name Arya, Aryan, which in Sanskrit, Arya means noble or noble ones. Also, monotheism was apparently common among Aryans who eventually invented Zoroastrianism. Now, Noah wasn't Jewish or Israeli or a Hebrew or a Semite. He was the father of all of them. The Bible tells us that the Phoenicians and the Israelites had trade posts with Javan, or the Ionian Greeks, and even Tarshish, which is in Spain. We know that they established the great city of Carthage, who conquered Spain, which Spain's original name was Iberia, which meant Hebrew. So it was originally called the Hebrew Peninsula. The Phoenicians had trade posts as far as Britain, Denmark, and potentially even the New World. The island in the middle of the Mediterranean bears the Hebrew words Sardania, which means rulers of Dan in Hebrew. The tribe of Dan were Viking-like people who had a habit of conquering lands and then renaming it after the father of their tribe, Dan. In Russia, along the Black Sea, they recently found the burial remains of a female Sarmatian warrior. She wore a necklace with either ancient Hebrew or ancient Phoenician written on it. This was found while they were constructing an airport. Elisha was the son of Javan, the fourth son of Noah's son, Javan, according to the book of Genesis. The Jewish historian Josephus related the descendants of Elisha with the Elonians, one of the ancestral branches of the Greeks, or the ancestor of the Almanet, Alemannic German from the territory of Alemannia which includes the Swabia region of Germany, is also called High German, another form being Yiddish, the historical language of the Ashkenazi Jews, a High German-based vernacular fused with elements taken from Hebrew and Aramaic.